All right, thanks, Jason. Uh, so do go ahead uh, as I move to share my screen here. Uh, and if you have some additional comments or questions, do throw them in the chat. Let me try that again, as Jason has just offered. Uh, so really, I, I have the privilege of uh, the home stretch here. And you know, for anybody who wasn't able to make this entire session, I know there are some. It's uh, it's a fair chunk of time, but we do appreciate everybody uh, who joined, regardless of how long you were able to spend with us. What I'm going to do is just a little recap of what we covered today, and uh, just try to summarize some of what you had to say, and then we'll talk about next actions from here. So that that will bring it home, I hope. So. We started off the day uh, for those that are completely unfamiliar or perhaps we're looking for a status update on IEA Wind Task 43, so digitalization within the wind industry. Um, that's that's really the sponsoring organization, if you like, and sponsoring task within IEA Wind uh, for this data model effort. So Jason shared a bit of an overview about that along with uh, links. You can check those out in the chat as well as in the recording later on for how to stay in touch on the task as a whole, whether you're interested in this data model or and other uh, aspects, other work that uh, the task is doing. Uh, and then we went into a couple of sessions back to back from Amit followed by Stephen about the data model itself. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's the intention? What does it cover? What's included? What are some of the tools that are available and how does one get involved? Where do you find those tools? How do you register issues or suggestions? A lot of what we just wrapped up was really aimed at that, right? Help us to understand what would be helpful to you, what your needs are. Uh, and, and then Gibson Kirsting from RWE shared with us some of their experiences at RWE trying to implement this model. Uh, and hopefully that just gave you a sense of, OK, this isn't some abstract thing out there that sounds maybe interesting, but is it really practical? Is it feasible? The answer is yes, it is. Uh, and you know, the more we hear from you and your experiences about how your adoption went or how your implementation went, uh, the, even the more helpful we can make this for the next folks. So do, again, feel free to provide us with that feedback as you get started. And we all know that you're you're looking for help as well. So you heard loud and clear. And then this last segment, as I've already uh, mentioned, Jason just asked us some questions, got our, our minds thinking a bit about what kinds of features uh, are we thinking about? That was sort of the most recent couple of questions. Uh, what kinds of tools? And also, what would help spur further adoption? So with all of that, you know, what did we actually hear? What was your feedback about the data model itself? Look, these are just some uh, summary, high, kind of high-level takeaways. We have uh, five, five-plus pages of all of the notes um, that we took throughout this session, all of the comments in the chat, uh, verbal conversations. Uh, we tried to capture all of that throughout this session, in addition to having the recording that we can review. So I don't want you to think these were our only takeaways, but just to reflect here, the data model, the purpose seemed clear for most at least. Definitely lots of interest. Uh, Jason underscored it, right? We have such a number of people who both registered hoping to attend the session and still quite a number of people who were able to attend the session, uh, 88, 89 uh, plus at some points. Uh, support is available, right, already uh, in terms of downstream tools uh, that we we know and love, things like uh, WinPro, Windographer, and others. Don't mean to exclude anybody at DNV. Don't want to exclude anybody there. Uh, and from uh, manufacturers as well, like NRG, like Visal, and others, right? So there, there's that interest, not just from the consumers of the model, but from those who can help to uh, facilitate the transmission and the collection of the data uh, and transmitting it downstream to the analysts. Uh, and a big question there that was raised early on, it came up a couple of times since, uh, strategies for dealing with historical data. You know, it's great to say, great, we could start using this go on a go forward basis. What do I do about all the data that I have? And again, there's some tools in progress to help with that. Uh, and so, so more to come on that, um, keep an eye out. Commercial adoption, you know, clearly there were some particular pain points that uh, Gibson described. Uh, and he really felt that the data model helped his organization and made it you know, easier to cha tackle these challenges in part because there was really in an industry effort to back him up. It just it wasn't Gibson by himself. It wasn't RWE uh, as a lone organization, um, but there's really been help from the industry to figure out how to solve some of these challenges. And really this belief that 
you know, his challenges are not unique, that many of us experience them or, or similar issues and that together we can solve those. So it's a great foundation. We do invite all of you to add, to contribute to that, asking questions or, you know, you add something new, um, you have an idea how to expand on the model. Uh, let's register an issue. Stephen showed us how to do that in GitHub. Uh, what's already covered? I, I could have written a lot of things here. For example, I left out uh, on my slide here, I realized digital calibration certificates, so very important. Uh, LiDAR coverage, and we heard, guess what? There are some folks already using this for solar resource assessment. And, you know, it's somewhere between 90 and 99 percent, depending on who you listen to uh, in terms of, of uh, being being there. So thanks for that, Stephen and Amit. Good, good feedback. Uh, so what are some of the things, uh, like lots of survey questions, what are some of the things that you shared with us? Time and resource is definitely a big challenge for, for all of us, right? That's kind of easy to understand, not so easy necessarily to overcome, but we'll do what we can to help with that through some of the other suggestions here and in the other notes that we took around tooling and help to just reduce the time and the effort that it will take you to adopt. So that's really what a lot of uh, of what we wanted to capture. Critical mass and demand needed. Maybe a question of what kind of, what is critical mass and from whom, uh, who needs to see what in order to adopt? And there are a couple of points of view on this. You know, one is, hey, there'll be certain standards bodies that may say, well, gosh, we, we need to have some kind of a benchmark before we approve. But at the same time, that uh, grassroots or ground up support from all of us who've joined here and those who perhaps weren't able to make it, but we know are interested or working on adoption, uh, that too. So I, my personal view, just to lend a little color to that is it, it's really gonna, you know, take both of those things. So we sort of meet in the middle with some uh, regulatory or formal adoption, as well as that informal, you know, demand, right? And then here we are trying to supply that solution. So, so thank you for that. Help mapping existing data structures, right? So yeah, there's tools, but then there's also just understanding the model itself. And we saw some great examples from Stephen today, but you may be asking yourselves, oh, this is what my data looks like today. How do I, how do I understand how that fits into the model? Um, those are things that we can all work on. And you know, when you understand, let's say you're somebody who is trying to work on mapping uh, data and your, your existing data, help others with your experiences, right? Uh, we would invite that. Importing and exporting is kind of related to that uh, and, and also related to the idea of strategies for historical data as well. Uh, of note, tools for populating the model, including pre-processing. Uh, that surprised me too, as it did Jason and perhaps some others. Uh, Gibson raised a really good point about that is, you know, is this should we be building tools or do some of those tools really already exist in downstream analysis tools that folks typically use today? And once those tools, again, these would be the DNBs, the wind pros, the windographers, and others in that category, uh, will they really fit the bill once those tools have provided support, full support for the data model? Uh, and all of those folks, once again, by the way, have said uh, that it's in their roadmap, they're, they're working toward that. So uh, probably number one biggest uh, help here uh, in terms of adoption, more tutorials and guides. So final word, which I didn't put up here um, because I think it was stated in so many of the survey questions that almost doesn't need to be in this slide in terms of actual content or that is uh, schema uh, content. What what coverage does the model itself provide? So apart from adoption, what can you do with it? Uh, folks are asking for more with LIDAR, especially floating LIDAR, uh, scanning LIDAR came up as well. and. Uh, maybe maybe those doubters out there, have we really covered everything we need to to SRA? Let's find out. So uh, more to come on that. If you're in interested in any of those discussions, uh, participating, contributing, sharing your experiences or what you need, what you mean when you say, gosh, can the model cover X, Y, or Z? Please do join us, participate in the meetings. We can get you plugged in. Make sure that we get your, your requests, your needs, your requirements. Uh, let's, uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't know if I got this done right. Jason, you may need to help me out here on the, uh, <laughs> poll side. Sure. Hold on. Let me log in. Or maybe you can do it. I didn't, I forgot to set this up ahead of time. <laughs> After testing it last night. Well, yep. so while we're bringing the poll up, oh, I'm sorry, you, you were going to say something. I'll share my screen with that. Awesome. Thank you, sir. 
All right. That's interesting. That's not what we expected. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get back. Cool. Just, just while you're sorting that out, um, thanks for all the people on the call where it's very late and it was very early starting. Uh, it's quite late in Central Europe at the moment and in Greece and India where other people are joining from. So thanks for uh partaken and there's someone from australia i don't actually know what time it is in australia whether it's morning or night i'm sure it's difficult to join so thank you um yeah so again was this workshop a good use of your time thank you so much for the positive reviews <clears throat> are you more likely to adopt the data model after this workshop absolutely um Still need company buy-in, but certainly better equipped. Uh, need to dive into specifics. So that feels overwhelmingly positive. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. <clears throat> what did you like most about this discussion or the session? Um, open, interesting discussions. Good information content. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. I know, folks, uh, for the few of you left, you're, you're anxious to move on as well uh, to whatever your next meeting may be or engagement or commitment. Uh, what are our next steps? It's to review all of this feedback uh, in, in specific detail. And you know, we do have a backlog and a roadmap in mind, but we'll see where adjustments need to be made based on your feedback. And then we'll communicate that out. A lot of that will be posted and you can see in the discussions in GitHub and then of course executing, right? So so we'll move on to the next thing uh, in order and keep working on it and uh, have have more revisions. So that's that's kind of the next steps. That's, that's the um, where we want to head. So I'll give my thanks as well as we wrap up here and let folks go appreciate all of the feedback, including about this session itself. Hope to do more more things like this, and we'll try to structure it uh, in a way that works well for you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Right. Bye bye. And bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. And just, I meet Stephen, Mike, everyone. Fantastic job. Thank you so much. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jason. Well done, folks. Yeah. All right. Um, for those, if you haven't Thanks, seen it, links everyone. to all of those notes are, I, I put it in our Slack channel. Uh, so you can find Very that. Very comprehensive, Mike. <laughs> your, your fast <laughs> note taker. Very impressive. Did my best. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Yeah. I got to run as well. Okay. Take care. Bye -bye. Great. Thanks. Bye.